For more on what to expect from President Trump today in just a little while when he speaks out in Las Vegas, I want to bring in press secretary to his 2020 re-election campaign, Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, thanks for being with us this afternoon. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this speech, I want to talk about the issue the president's been laser focused on this week, um, the border, border security specifically. Um, tell me about his proposed solutions, because while he's been very focused on the issue, he's not been quite so focused when it comes to defining the solution this week, backtracking away from threats to close the southern border altogether. Well, the very obvious solution is constructing the southern barrier on our border. Uh, we will see, as we heard yesterday from the Army Corps Board of Engineers, 450 miles of that constructed by the end of 2020. That is the key to solving this. We also need more border patrol agents. We also need Congress to step up. The president lacks the power on his own to close the Flores Settlement Agreement, to close some of the loopholes that allow these family units to be released into society, and which are serving as a magnet to our country. We need Congress, and that means we need Democrats. And so far, Nancy Pelosi has derelicted her duty to act and secure this country. Kaylee, what was it, though, that caused President Trump to change his mind midweek and move away from the idea about closing the border altogether? Was it the bipartisan pushback he received from Capitol Hill? No, I don't think so at all. The president, I don't see him as backtracking. What I see him as saying is this option is still on the table, along with many others like the tariffs. He doesn't want to use this option. It's a last resort. But look at what this has done by talking about closing the border, by talking about auto tariffs. Mexico has stepped up. You heard from the president yesterday. They're keeping now thousands of people in their country. Nonprofits are reporting more detentions in Mexico than we've seen before. So what he did to great effect was to force Mexico to come to the table and step up. You mentioned the commitment he reiterated yesterday, which is to get four or 450 miles of new border wall constructed over the next two years. But how realistic is that when you consider the administration hasn't really constructed even one brand new mile of wall in the past two years? Well, we've already seen 87 miles updated. We're going to see 97 miles constructed this year and then 450 in total by 2020. We just now got this funding via the National Emergency Declaration. And the president is right in saying yesterday, look at the cost that we have when we have a poor southern border. You have 100,000 Americans a year dying of illegal drugs, $500 billion worth of these illegal drugs crossing our border, Julian. And then to consider on top of that that there is enough fentanyl to kill every American in this country four times. This president has taken the national emergency declaration, issued the veto, because there's one person right now standing for border security, and that's President Trump. Well, some Democrats are talking about border security. The Attorney General of California floated an interesting uh, proposal uh, last night on CNN. Take a listen to what Xavier Becerra said. I want to then get your reaction. The most logical way to use resources, if you get authorization, is to help reduce the backlog of these asylum cases. Mm -hmm. The more that people don't have a case adjudicated, the more people are hearing back in those home countries, hey, guess what? The person get, got into the country, claimed asylum. As far as we know, six months later, they're still there. So in, a set, in essence there, Kaylee, saying get these people processed faster. That way, the folks who are rejected get returned to their home countries, whether it's Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Mexico, and that sends the most possible powerful message. What's wrong with that? Well, Xavier Becerra must be living in an alternate reality because when you have the system flooded with faux false asylum claims, people arriving who have no merit to their claim, we know most asylum claims are denied. And when you have, as you heard yesterday from the El Centro Border Patrol, 193 fake families arriving just in that area, and that's just in that area, not the entirety of the border, you've got a problem here. The system's overwhelmed. Uh, he's one of the deniers there of the crisis. He should listen to Jay Johnson, who's admitted that there's a crisis on our southern border rather than denying reality. It sounds like, Kaylee, what you're saying is it's, it's not fair resource-wise to put the onus of tracking these folks, or not tracking, but processing them in the first place on the United States. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Julian. The crisis is a direct result of the obstruction by Democrats in Congress, and we have to do something about it. It's a colossal surge, and it's overwhelming our immigration system, and I'm totally willing to close the border. Tonight, 
The President of the United States calling attention to an immigration crisis the likes of which the Homeland Security Secretary equates to a Cat 5 hurricane. That's how significant it is considered. Border Patrol apprehending more than 100,000 illegal migrants at our southern border just last month alone. Think about that. It's staggering. Okay, so let's just employ a little bit of common sense, just for a minute here. Considering these staggering numbers, Lord knows we could use a little common sense right now. More than 100,000 foreigners are illegally crossing our border within one 30-day stretch, and then they're disappearing into our country. None of this is good. It is not good. But you want to know what else is not good? This idea, perpetuated by the media and by the Democratic Party that somehow we're in an all-or-nothing environment when it comes to immigration. You know, it shouldn't be that hard. Really shouldn't. I mean, step one, secure our border. Add a wall. Add surveillance. Add more border patrol. And step two, attack the laws and the books and reform them so that America makes it easy for foreigners who are good people, who are hardworking people that want to be American and aren't looking for handouts from American taxpayers to come here. We need them. We need immigrants. We want them. No one is disputing that. But if you listen to the Democrats, some of whom are disgustingly comparing the president's desire to secure our borders as akin to the Third Reich in Nazi Germany. Yeah, nuts, right? We're going to tackle that later in the program. To listen to these Democrats, you'd think conservatives absolutely hated immigrants which is a pathetic oversimplification and an unjust characterization, characterization, if you would, of this entire issue. Yes, there are bad people trying to infiltrate our country. The Dems need to recognize that, and they need to deal with that. And yes, there are wonderful people that want to be in our country for the right reasons, and we want them. To suggest that the administration's policies are anti-immigrant is nothing but political posturing. The president offering to make DACA people citizens. The Dems turned their back on that. Think about it. They turned their back. They walked away from that. Why? <laughs> because it doesn't serve them politically. I mean, why would they allow the Republicans to be credited with extending citizenship to millions? They have no intention of allow allowing that. No intention because they want to hoard and save that entire group of voters to themselves. They want that group of voters to be dependent. Dependent on Democratic politicians for citizenship and for basic necessities. Let them in and keep them on a dependent short Leash. Yes, that's the economic and political agenda of so many Democrats right now. Sad, right? But here's the reality. And this is the future. I predict that if the Trump administration stays focused, this administration may be the first one to address immigration in a meaningful and positive way, a way that will matter for years to come. This president, yeah, Donald Trump, and the Republican Party might actually just be the first to lock down our borders while opening up America to the best, to the brightest, to the hardest working citizens from all over the world. It's high time we accomplish all of that, and we can. President Trump at the southern border in Calexico, California, meeting there with Border Patrol agents, uh, border sheriffs, visiting the border wall, and pledging hundreds more miles of wall to be built in the near future. Under construction, we had a lot of, a lot of things happening, and uh, we expect to have close to 400 miles done within about uh, two years from now. That's a lot. 400 miles will cover most of it. The president's threat to shut down the border has Mexico and its government listening? President Trump saying since he made that threat, Mexico is now doing more than they've done in decades. 25. Mexico of the last four days has done more than they've ever done. We were talking about that before, Kevin. Uh, they're apprehending people now by the thousands and bringing them back to their countries, bringing them back to where they came from. And I think you see that. That's at their southern border. And that's a big difference. They've never done that before. I mean, in 
When I say never done, I mean like in 30 years, they've never done it like they're doing it right now. The president's boundless energy continues after his trip to the border. Tonight, he's attending a fundraiser in Los Angeles. There, he will add to his campaign's 2020 war chest. The campaign ended 2018, raising more than $129 million. Our first guest tonight with the president at the California-Mexico border today uh, to take up a roundtable discussion on the border crisis. Joining us tonight, president of the National Border Patrol Council, Brandon Judd. Uh, Brandon, good to have you with us. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, Brandon, let's start with the, your impression of uh, the wall and, uh, the, and your sense of the president's uh, uh, view of it all. Well, the first thing that he did was when he declared the national security and he, uh, he showed Congress that he's not going to take no for an answer, uh, he showed the American public that he's going to secure the funds that are necessary to build the walls in the strategic locations to physically keep people out um, in an effort to end the catch and release, which is exactly what we need to do. You know, Brandon, I could not actually, that border was never close, and that wall was never close enough to really get a, a sense of it. It's 30 feet tall, right? Yep. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be, yes. And your, your sense of uh, its, uh, if its ability to repel uh, illegal, uh, uh, would-be illegal immigrants. Oh, it's already proven. It's, uh, it's already proven that, that that works. I mean, all you have to do is look at the, the locations where we have built those physical barriers and, and how illegal immigration has dropped exponentially. Uh, that's the proof that you need. The, the Democrats, they know it. They know that it works. They know that, that that will help secure the border. They're just playing politics. We live in a political world, and they're, they're playing it that way. Uh, playing it that way, and it is for them no game. They mean to obstruct this president at every turn. Uh, and, and by so, we, I think we have to, uh, in all uh, uh, honesty and, uh, uh, well, uh, just being... Uh, comprehensive, as they like to say when talking about immigration, uh, include the rhinos who blocked the president throughout the two years of Republican control uh, in, in the Congress. Uh, they oh, still absolutely. persist. A absolutely. It's not just the Democrats. I mean, it's, 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 of course, it's mostly the Democrats, but it's not just the Democrats. The rhinos exist as well. But, but President Trump has proven that he's able to get around them. I mean, we don't just need laws in order to end the catch and release. We need, like what you said before, we need ingenuity. We need the, the right ideas. And, and frankly, I think the right ideas are coming because this administration has been overturning every single rock, looking at all of the laws, and, and digging for the responses that we need to end the catch and release program. And frankly, I think it's coming. Well, you propose that uh, Border Patrol agents should be trained at the... Uh uh, senior uh, senior patrol agent level uh, to be also asylum officers uh, with limited authority to conduct uh, credible fear interviews with uh, uh, would be well with asylum seekers uh, is it enough to cut down the uh, what is it a two to five year uh, backlog uh, on uh, illegal border crisis who are claiming asylum Absolutely. If you look at the way the laws are structured, um, once that credible fear interview is done, if, if a person fails that credible fear interview, they must see an immigration judge within 10 days. That's the regulations that exist. Uh, once they see an immigration judge, uh, if that person does not have uh, a, a credible fear claim, and we know that 90% of people that ask for asylum, once they go before an, an immigration judge, determine that they don't have an asylum case, um, we know that that will end up being the, the catalyst that gets people deported back. And once they're deported, these people will stop coming. It's the catch and release that is the magnet that draws people here to violate our immigration laws. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the magnitude of this problem is, is frankly unimaginable now. I mentioned the backlog uh, of asylum seekers. Uh, we have uh, 100,000 a month being uh, apprehended. Uh, illegal immigrants, which means, uh, according to the, you know, the traditional ratio of three to one, that means we're talking about 400,000 a month uh, in this country. This is just, and the catch and release is now, it seems, the, the primary response of the Border Patrol. How do we, how do we fix it? Uh, again, that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to train um, our agents to become asylum um, 
limited authority with the, with asylum officer responsibilities. That's going to be the way that we that we end this this problem. It will end along with the border walls, um, along with the expansion of the migrant protection protocols, or better named, remain in Mexico. You know, when when you put all of those things together again, cut Congress out of the process. You know that Congress isn't going to act. And like I said today, if they're not going to be part of the solution, they need to get out of the way and let this administration work to end this problem. And the administration is is working to do that. And frankly, I think we're going to get there. And why did it take so long to implement the so-called Remain in Mexico program? The president was talking about it two months ago. Uh, DHS apparently didn't uh, react. Well, so, you know, there's, there's, I, I'm not going to defend DHS. You, you know darn good well that I'm not going to do that. Um, but remain in Mexico, you have to have the Mexican government's cooperation. And that's part of the reason that the president um, uh, threatened to close the border. If we're not going to get Mexico's cooperation, we, um, you know, he's willing to take um, economic sanction, uh, economic actions against Mexico. And we've seen exactly what happened when he, when he threatened to take those economic actions, now all of a sudden the Mexican government is doing more, and frankly, they're, I, I believe that they're also going to expand the, the Remain in Mexico um, protocols to allow us to put more people in Mexico um, pending their asylum claim. And the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of illegal uh, immigrants in this country, are they going to be allowed to remain uh, in place, or are they going to be deported, do you think? So, so the first, the first thing that we have to do is we have to address the current issue of those people that are coming up to our border. Once we get that under control, and we will get that under control, then you can start looking at the interior of the United States and going after that. The, the problem is if we if we go after the interior first, then you just continue to have more people coming in, and they just backfill those people that you go after. If you go after the border first, that's why the border is key. Go after the border first secure that end, and then you can start working towards the insurance. Brendan Judd, we thank you for being with us. Appreciate it very much.